Well done, KSH. Well done, clever move. Make way and roll out the red carpet for one of the most powerful updates to AFS Connect platform since KSH ditched their weather radar layer. Oh wait, hold on. Anyway, the star of this month's update is undoubtedly the new Insights Fleet dashboard. Check this out. <laughs> I mean, I think we can all agree here that KSH had a pretty shaky start to fleet reporting, previously limiting growers to a mere seven days of fuel and status reporting. Yep, seven days. Or if you're an Excel wizard, you could have used their .csv data export feature, which allowed you to assess a year's worth of data at a time. Though probably most farmers would have taken that year to learn how to use Excel in the first place. Well, girls and guys, things have changed, and KSH's approach with this new dashboard is remarkably simple, yet tremendously powerful. Unlike Deer's OpSensor fleet reporting, which may look nice but lacks that valuable depth, KSH have opted to go for a known industry data processing tool, otherwise known as Microsoft's Power BI. Yay! Oh yeah. Why should you care and what's so clever about it? Okay, so you don't have to particularly care about Power BI, but what this does mean is that KSH can now develop new powerful reports at a rate of knots for you all to use. This is exactly what connectivity is all about, powerful data insights. Furthermore, it's like child's play to use. Click anywhere randomly on the report and more often than not, you'll learn something new without breaking anything. A sure win for time-strapped farmers. But enough of the chat, Let's take a look. Okay, so back on NerdCam for the Insights Fleet Dashboard Overview. And the first thing you're gonna notice is this new Insights tab. That is obviously where we're gonna click. This is it, guys. This is the Insights Fleet Dashboard. So just taking you from the top down, you've got all your filters along the top. The period range of the data shown here, which you can customize by clicking on um, like so. You then have the period view itself, so you can see here everything is split into monthly on these charts or if we select weekly it then turns into weekly view and then obviously for daily a daily view you then have uh, product filters so product line filter which if you've got a harvester or tractors or sprayers depending what you have in your fleet you can filter and start to narrow down to the vehicles of interest here then you have vehicle itself so this is whether you want to select two vehicles four vehicles one vehicle vehicle of interest but giving you more of that micro level uh, filter capability there. Fuel type then, no idea what fuel type is for um, unless you've got like a methane tractor or something but fuel type, uh, I don't know what the other options are going to be other than diesel. I, I could be wrong, I feel like I'm being an idiot. Unit of measure, uh, so US Imperial and metric, I'm going to select metric because I'm from England. Looking down the left hand side are our hours and then on the right hand side is all fuel used. So hours are then split into status by percentage and the actual time depending on the date range. So for example, as I said before, if you like start clicking around randomly, you start to learn new things. For example, I click on this 43%. Look at that. Everything then filters down and starts highlighting that specific data on the 43%. To go back, I can just click on it again and it resets that filter. But that's what I mean, you can click around and see what happens. Likewise, I can click on this moving status in August 22 and see how it filters my data. So I can see highest fuel used was from this Steiger 580. Fuel consumption in liters was 1.4. So it just starts to point at specific information depending on what you click on. We've also got the option at the bottom here to see more details. Now this, jumps us even deeper into the details of, in this case, status and hours used. For example, if we want to filter by travel time, let's see what month had the highest travel time. So I can see in November was a pretty high travel time. And we can start to break that down even more. If we click down here, we can see this 580, the Steiger 580 again, was traveling quite a bit. In fact, it was traveling more than it was working. Wonder why that is. Maybe this vehicle is too far away from its area of 
work. On the right hand side, we've got working by month, traveling by month, and idle by month. So a bit more of a overview of what's happening depending on the status. But that's how it works. So you have your deeper insights and you can go as deep as you want with this data and filter it and sort it the way that you want to assess it. We then have on the right hand side, our fuel data. And we can do the same. We can start clicking around. So I'm going to click on May, 24th of May, 2022, which was the highest day of fuel usage. So we can then start to see, well, what was going on on that day? Um, only 25 hours. But yeah, you can start to break in to highest fuel usage by vehicle. And then again, a breakdown per month or per week of your fuel consumption. We can dive into more details. We get our highlights along the top. In total, 80,000 liters used out of 2,000 engine hours, and then it averages out at 40 liters per hour used. Again, you can start to filter it. Let's take a look and filter by engine hours. In May, 128 engine hours. And we can then open and expand that a bit more and then specific vehicles and who was doing what. So again, I'm assuming it's that, yep, it's that 580. It's an absolute workhorse, that machine. Clicking on the metrics again, we'll then filter all these charts, the daily view, the weekly view, and the monthly view, and perhaps provide a little bit more insight and detail into what's going on, efficiencies, um, and perhaps when it's time to replace a vehicle. That's the kind of insights that we're looking for. So go and dive into the Insights Fleet dashboard, click around and see what comparisons you can draw and what decisions you can make based on this data. This is only gonna get more powerful. But wait, there's more. If you are one of the aforementioned data wizards or perhaps you have one amongst your team, AFS Connect still has them covered through the revamped machine history report. Revamped so far as to say that they've moved it from the previous fleet portal now over to the farm portal. Side note, it's probably about time that we stop calling it the farm portal as it's clearly becoming the everything portal. Anyways, the function of this exportable report was always to give growers the absolute freedom in how they manage their data. You don't have to use it in KSH's portal all the time, so take it somewhere else and go wild with it. No biggies to learn here really, but the new UI is a lot nicer to navigate through. I'm gonna navigate to reports. Under report builder, select the type as fleet and machine, which then filters out the options available to us. The report can only be data export. Date range, something to note here, which you'll learn as you play with it more. If the report is too big, simply put, some programs can't process them. If you're going for large date ranges, usually there's quite a lot of line items that can cause Excel or the tool that you're using to read the data to crash. Bear in mind and take into account the variables such as how many machines you are reporting on, how much work those machines have done, and select a date range accordingly. Don't go for anything too big. Report name has to be one word. There cannot be any spaces or special characters in between. So I'm gonna call it, what is Timmy doing for? Because I've already done three other reports and trying to show you guys this. The format can be CSV or JSON. JSON, obviously the format is dependent on the software that you're taking this data to. So equipment then, you can choose to select all the equipment. You can choose specific equipment of interest. And then I'm gonna hit simple generate export. It gives me my little uh, readout here. Please wait, machine data export is not ready yet. And you don't have to wait on this page. It will keep doing this thing in the background. So don't feel like you have to stay here. I can start navigating around. We also have show report history, and this will actually give you the status of the report that you have decided to generate. So you can see what is Timmy up to or what is Timmy doing. As soon as they are complete, you will see success. It will also also give you the date added start date and end date and then you can hit download and at the bottom here if I move my head you can see then the export there and that's it guys there's nothing more to it than that the really magical stuff is what you do after the export to be honest I touched on these improved notifications on my latest mobile app update video however let's jump into it a little more on the portal side KSH have now added canned parameters to their list of customizable notifications, building upon their current geofence and curfew-based notifications. 
Now, growers have the ability to create notifications on a multitude of different CAN parameters for each or all of their fleet. And the best thing about all of this is that those notifications now come through as a mobile push notification if you have the mobile app installed on a handheld device, keeping you in the know through every operator lunch break. You guys wouldn't do that to create new custom notifications on CAN parameters. Most of you will probably be aware of the geofence and curfew notifications while well, just navigate to the same spot, which is plus icon here. And at the bottom under setup, we've got geofence and notification. We're gonna hit notification. So details, for example, give your notification a name and this will be the name that pops up on the push notification on your phone. So I'm gonna do a generic one, fuel, level low. You're then going to choose the equipment you want it applicable to. So I am going to select all of them. So when all their fuel levels are low, I want to know about it because I'm the fuel guy. Next is notification type, which is geofence, which is drawing a boundary and you can set a notification for when a machine or a fleet goes in or out of that geo boundary. Curfew is a time based notification. You then have a combination of the two and then the one we're interested in, which is machine parameters. Once you select machine parameters, it filters down the options available and you can select the applicable CAN parameter in that case for this notification. So obviously it's fuel level, so I'm interested in fuel level. You then have above or below. So this is uh, at what point the notification is gonna be triggered. I'm gonna say below 10% so when my fuel level is below 10%, then I want to receive a notification through push on my mobile. There's also option to do emails, but let's face it, it just becomes um, a pain in the ass trying to navigate through all those notifications. That's pretty much it. And like I said, you can choose whatever parameter you want. There are obviously certain parameters available for certain vehicles, so bear that in mind, but a very simple process. Finally, a minor housekeeping though handy to know setting is the new hide archived vehicles option. For those of you who haven't noticed, when a connected vehicle is removed from an AFS Connect account, its legacy lives on as a greyed out archived vehicle. This ensures that the historical data it collected during its fruitful time on the farm are not lost. However, that does also mean that fleet reports will include data from machines that the grower may no longer own. If you wish to only report on current machines and remove the archived ones from the list, then ensure that the show archived equipment is set to no. I'm super excited about this update and hats off to KSH for nailing power in simplicity. And if you haven't already, go get stuck into that new Insights Fleet dashboard. It is exactly what ag innovation is for.